150 views from Kings fans, <coughs> 1,000 from Canucks fans. What's gonna happen? And welcome to Overtime, brought to you by Kingscast at www.kingscast.net. I'm Keith Cornelick. And I'm Chris Kalisius. Welcome back, Kings fans. We are in the playoffs once again, thank God, and we're playing the Vancouver Canucks. That's right, Kings fans, we're back. Uh, we're back here to talk about the first game uh, in the Vancouver LA series, uh, looking pretty good so far. Also to introduce ourselves to Vancouver fans who might be tuning in, and we'll also uh, talk about uh, what we can expect uh, during the playoffs. So here we go, and a special welcome to British Columbia TV. Thanks for letting us know we were on your show two years ago. Let's do this. All right, so if you're just joining us, a special welcome to Vancouver Canucks fans. And uh, unlike a lot of other, you know, vlogs on the internet, uh, you know, we have a lot of respect for the Vancouver Canucks, Chris. Yeah, we do. You know, we respect the team. Obviously, back in 2010, we did a full series uh, against, the, you know, the Canucks then. And we were very respectable. You know, I thought we sort of called it if, the, if they did a good job and everything. So we're back again to do that again because that's just who we are. There we go. We had pre uh, I had initially said Canucks in five. I was a little bit pissed off. Maybe a little drug at the time. I'm now saying Canucks in six. Chris also said Canucks in six. Uh, but if you're just joining us, there's a couple of things we want you to know about us. Number one is that we're not going to refer to the Sedins as the sisters. You know, because bottom line is, if I had a twin brother uh, playing in the National Hockey League and we were getting nominated for Hart trophies, you know, every year, every other year, and the only sacrifice that I had to make was that I had red hair, well, God damn it, I'm going to do it. Uh, number two, Canucks fans, is we're not going to say things like, you know, Van Loser, things like that. We're so above that. You know, we're King's cast. Watch our old shows. Because, uh, and also, you know, Keith is Canadian. We're very, you know, sensitive and respectful of that. And the final reason why we should welcome you to the show is we're not going to say things like suck at Canucks. Well, we actually might. If we win a game or, you know, we win the series, we're going to say it. That said, after game one, suck it, Canucks! <laughs> All right, Keith, so coming into the game tonight <laughs> in Vancouver, uh, you know, we talk about this series. You know, everyone, you know, was talking about the Vancouver Canucks. Like, they're the best team that's ever played hockey before, and the Kings would have zero chance. They'll probably get swept. You know, we didn't even go that far here at Kings Cast. No. <laughs> we, we're a little more realistic, I think, than most Kings fans. Uh, but, you know, uh, and the Kings have had some issues coming in the last couple games in the regular season. You know, they did things that they haven't done all year, which is take, you know, a bunch of bad penalties, blow leads, and take, you know, and, and give up goals on the PK. And this was an issue going in into game one. So going into game one tonight, we're hoping that they got those sort of jitters out of their system. They made the playoffs, you know, and the pressure to me is all on Vancouver. Well, bad news for Vancouver is that Daniel Sedin is out, uh, obviously with a concussion. They thought he might come back for game one. And uh, good news for L.A. is that Jeff Carter is back in. Looks like he's almost kind of fully healed mm. with that ankle injury, uh, which is great because no one wants to see Brad Richardson, who is out with an appendectomy, <laughs> rest riches to that worked uh, out. Brad. Yeah, uh, but no one wants to see him on the top line. you got to see uh, Jeff Carter in there, you know, generating scoring um, so coming into tonight uh, it was a game that we needed to take advantage of because listen when you have two Sedins on the ice with the way they communicate like almost telepathically uh, you really want to take advantage of that and the Kings it looked like from the beginning Chris kind of dictated the play um, you know up and down the ice yeah, they really did. I thought they were uh, definitely the more aggressive team after the first couple of minutes where, you know, Vancouver was all over it just because they had, they were at home and they were sort of pumped up from the crowd and everything. But once things sort of settled down, it was clear that the, the Kings were all over it because, you know, let's be honest, this is a team that really has nothing to lose. You know, they have everything to gain from, you know, taking a game like this. And, and I was happy with the first period. You know, Canucks, of course, score, you know, a goal from Burroughs in the first five minutes of the game. And it was sort of an iffy goal. You know, it wasn't, I can't really blame anyone. You know, Daddy was sort of in the way. I mean, I was, you know, Quick just gave up a goal. What are you going to do? They're pumped up. That's that's what's going to happen. Yeah. And, you know, you got to give a shout out to Roberto Luongo, who, um, you know, almost every year is in the Vesna conversation. And, uh, you know, this year wasn't as much, you know, with Corey Schneider, uh, you know, taking a more escalated role in the Vancouver Connects organization. But uh, this is a guy tonight that was on top of the pucks. I mean, he was looking around people and still was able to see shots going right to him. And I thought played a really, really good game. And, you know, the knock on him is that he can be shaky from time to time. But if you look at Jonathan Quick through the last two playoffs, series that we've been in so can Jonathan Quick so you definitely got to give credit to uh, Roberto Luongo and you know the Kings were you know getting a lot of penalties you know they were on the power play a lot and yes they did convert two of eight yeah uh, but it still didn't look very good there so Mike Richards you know the guy that we traded Braden Shen and Wayne Simmons who went on to have uh, very good uh, seasons with the uh, Philadelphia Flyers for did score a goal and uh, you know then we had a five-minute power play 
you know, one that we could have scored eight goals, and it would still be a power play. We only scored one. Who gets it? Uh, but the newest addition to our power play, ex-Vancouver Canuck, Willie Mitchell. Yeah, I gotta love that. Uh, you know, I think everyone back in, in Vancouver still loves Willie Mitchell. Remember back in 2010 where everyone kind of like Dowdy still? Yeah, I mean, that honeymoon's over. You know, they got the gold yeah. medal. That seems like old news now. But you go back to that five on three. It's like the five on three, hey, Kings, you need to score on those every single time. You know, I know they had a bunch of these in the second half of the season, especially where they just kind of made fools out of themselves and didn't make it happen. But Richards, I thought, a fantastic goal. That was that was awesome. Yeah. And, you know, I tweeted this out earlier on Twitter tonight. If Jamie Compon is still the power play coach going into next season, I quit. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, you know, that said, they did get it done twice in the power play. It should have been probably a little bit more than that. But uh, Luongo was outstanding. Vancouver's defense uh, definitely up the pressure. And then uh, going into the third period, um, I, you know, Vancouver really upped it, you know, they, and they continue to, you know, take the physical pressure to the Los Angeles Kings. I mean, there was that, you know, terrible penalty against Kyle Clifford, but Vancouver, it seemed, was doing the physical things, Chris, that, the, you know, Boston was doing against them in the cup final, with which rattled them. And, you know, L.A., you know, they shook it off fairly well. But, you know, if, I think if Vancouver keeps coming with this physical pressure, it's going to be very interesting for the Kings, who aren't necessarily used to that. No, definitely. You know, that third period was huge. I mean, I think we were kind of joking about it. They were like, I see uh, over time triple overtime all over this game uh, uh, bad for the show it kinda, yeah, yeah definitely bad for the show but uh you know it seemed like the kings were, were really kind of resisting that uh, that huge surge that vancouver got because they kind of i think they got over the fact that you know they're the number one seed they won their president's trophy they're at home you know they kind of settled down a lot and it was kind of looking worrisome because you can tell uh, you can say we've seen a lot of games with the kings you can just tell what a when opposing goal is just setting up and there were a lot of those chances and i think quick more than anyone, really settled down after that second goal to end the second. And uh, he played like the guy that we think should win the Vesna. Yeah, and, uh, you know, going to third, you know, I uh, you know, I remember I was a little bit downtrodden. You know, I think I just refilled my whiskey and uh, thinking uh, this is not going to end well for the Kings. And sure enough, uh, with Kyle Clifford out, Dustin Penner gets escalated, playing with Richards and Carter. And who gets the game-winning goal but Dustin Pancakes? Oh, my freaking God, Penner? I... Uh, Wow, with an amazing assist from Jeff Carter off his skate. Yeah, Jeff Carter was sort of like downplaying the thing after the game, saying, you know, it was kind of lucky. It's like, no way. You watch the replay. He, he you know, clearly purposely directed it towards yeah. him. It was a fantastic, you know, uh, goal. Uh, Penner was wide open. I mean, even Penner wouldn't mess that one up. Uh, so, you know, setting the crowd into a silence. You know, this is always great. You know, they obviously they won the game later. Dustin Brown with an empty netter to seal the deal. Crowd was already, you know, exiting at that point. But you get a game like this. Anytime an eight beats a one, it's huge. I don't care if it's game one or, or any time the game of the series. You know, this is a highly touted team. They win it was one game away from winning the Stanley Cup this year. So this is a fantastic win for the Kings. I think we predicted they would win this game. I, I don't know. Watch the old shows or whatever. But. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there we go. 1-0 uh, for the Kings. We got game two in Vancouver. All right, so we're going into game two again in Vancouver. And, uh, you know, the Kings up one nothing, And, uh, you know, no one expects the Vancouver Canucks to just sit down and take it. Um, you know, the big question for me, Chris, is Daniel Sedin going to come back? If he comes back, uh, you know, you're almost looking at like a trade deadline of epic proportions kind of deal because, uh, you know, him especially playing with his brother Heinrich, um, you know, it's going to be a completely different offense, a completely different top six, at least, for the Vancouver Canucks. And, you know, how are the Kings going to defend against that? Uh, you know, you're looking at, well, Willie Mitchell, who, for the Kings' best defenseman all season, you're looking at your guys like Drew Doughty and Voinov and, you know, Martinez to really, really step it up. I think that's really the keys for the Kings to defeating that. Yeah, definitely going into game two. I'm looking for a lot, a little more intensity from the Kings. I know they had their moments, but uh, Vancouver definitely laying it out on the ice. Of course, they took a lot more penalties, but, you know, I'm looking for the defenseman to be a little more involved. You know, uh, Doughty had an okay game. Voinov had an okay game. You know, Green you know, got his helmet knocked off twice. I don't know if he doesn't know how to... You know, adjust it. You know, get it. I on think there. it's for show. It might be for Maybe, show. It looks yeah. so cool when it's yeah, it does. Off, especially when you're taking a, a cool still with you know, an awesome camera. But uh, you know, I'm looking for another super competitive game. And let's be honest about this game. Another game where the pressure is all on Vancouver because coming back, to, you know, into Staples in Game Three. And I know when they melted down last year against the Sharks in Game Three, they're going to be rocking at Staples Center. So got to win this game for Vancouver. So. No, you definitely do. And I'm looking at a guy like an Alex Burrows also. You know, to really, really step it up. Ryan Kessler as well. You know, has not looked as good as he did you know uh, a couple of seasons ago I mean I picked him first I think ninth overall in my uh, fantasy draft uh, this year and it was a little disappointing for me so you're looking at guys like that to step up a Burroughs to maybe get under the skin of the Kings with Kyle Clifford out you're missing that uh, physical presence and God help me I hope Daryl Sutter doesn't put in Kevin Westgard. 
you know, Kings fans, Vancouver Canucks fans, your question of the day is, who's going to step it up for either of our teams? Leave your comments, as always, downstairs. All right, Kings fans, so we'll be back on Friday. And that sound you hear is uh, Vancouver fans crapping their pants. They're scared. All right, now we'll be back with full coverage with another sweet show, breaking it down. I'm Chris Kalaszewski. And don't forget to click that subscribe button right up top. Kings fans, Canuck fans, uh, we don't want to get a show out every game for you up until the Kings win the Stanley Cup. <laughs> no, they won't. I'm Keith Kordalik. He's Chris Kalaszewski. Thank you for watching Overtime. Bye, Kings cast.